You're watching The Daily on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen and today we are getting to know more about the Around Town Tellers. They are a local success story here in Nanaimo who are really uh, building up quite a reputation in the world of oral storytelling. On the agenda for this edition of The Daily, two men and their fishing rods. We're also going to be planting some dogwood trees in celebration of 100 years in Port Alberni. French Creek School in Coombs is celebrating also 100 years with the rest of the community there and we'll be visiting a one-of-a-kind brewery in the Shushwap. That's our road trip. But before we get to any of that, Kelly Robinson is here with an inspiring story about the bond between human and dog. Let's go hear some stories. <laughs> And the oldest sister took the slipper, went into her chambers with her mother, and tried to shove her toes into it, but her big toe wouldn't fit. Mother said, get a knife. Chop it off. You'll not need to walk on your feet when you are queen. She shoved her foot in and went, shoved her foot in and swallowed back the pain and went out to meet the king's son. That was a short excerpt from, before you go away, Sandy, that's a little piece of... Cinderella, the original Grimm's version of Cinderella from 1812. We'll have more on this edition of The Daily on how you can hear the full-length story as told by the Around Town Tellers. They are our guest location and our featured guests today on this edition of The Daily. We have Margaret Murphy here. She's been with the Around Town Tellers since the inception. Yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, Lori Peck and I in uh, 2006 were talking to some of the existing tellers here in Nanaimo. It had a group here and uh, uh, we said, how do we gather that energy and get storytelling back into Nanaimo? And I think the community was ready and we gathered over at Coyote's restaurant and now we have the pleasure of meeting here at the Unitarian Hall on Townsite. And is it every Friday night? Every second Friday of the month. So um, gather at 7. We start at 7.30 to 9.30. There's a lot of wonderful tales and we mix music with it too. So there's poetry, story, and there's a lot of music and uh, mostly story. And we celebrate um, stories from around the world or folk tales, personal tales, travel stories. And there's always a surprise or two. The time that we've spent here already today, I'm getting a real sense, I think, for the energy, and it is fantastic. And I don't know how many rules there are. I know there is one for sure, no paper allowed. This uh -huh. is pure oral. That's right. We love to celebrate off the page and the old art of remembering what it is to share stories um, in the community and together. And it feels like family as we gather here. And it is off the page. You're quite right. And people think, well, how do I do that? But we welcome new tellers, seasoned tellers, and everyone in between. Excellent. Thank you, Margaret. We'll have more from the Around Town Tellers on this edition of The Daily. Up next, French Creek Elementary School, along with the rest of Coombs is celebrating 100 years. French Creek Elementary School is celebrating along with the rest of the Coombs community as they celebrate 100 years. There is an open house on Friday evening, uh, cake cutting and special celebrations all day Saturday as well as on Sunday. The Ocean Idlers are doing a historic tour of Coombs and you can get more information on the website that you see on the screen right now. We are here with the Around Town Tellers in Nanaimo and we're going to look now at the art of oral storytelling. Uh, Lori, it's very different different than reading, checking my notes like I'm doing now. When you're standing on stage and verbally sharing a story with people, what, what, what is the magic in that? Where does it lie? The magic, eye to eye, voice to voice. You hear and you see and you feel when it's read off a page. Part of that is removed, the connection with each person in the audience. So we at Around Town Tellers want that full connection and people love it. They just kind of tingle when they hear stories. Everything comes alive, you know. And the stories range anywhere from five to about 20 minutes on average from what I what I understand. It can go much longer than that. And I think one of the things people wor wonder is how can you memorize all that? But maybe when you're coming from an emotional place, it's beyond memorizing, isn't it? It's beyond memorizing. It's understanding the context of the message of the story. And then it's delivered with detail and, and, and 
um, what do you description and and it touches people in ways that uh, is different than when you read. So, um, for example, I met a little guy in uh, McDonald's and he peeped over the little petition and he says, "Hello, my name is Peter," and I said, "Hello," and from there. I found out his daughter played piano and his wife died and we hugged at the end and a woman was watching us and she thought we knew each other our whole lives and I had met him five minutes ago. Did you just make that up? No, it's a true story. (laughs) (laughs) What makes a good oral story? Oral story, Uh, voice, inflection, um, gestures. Some people do no gestures and just do it with voice. Some people go, can do a two-hour story and keep you totally engaged. Some need five minutes. It, there's no rule of thumb other than your passion for the topic and the story and the people that you're speaking with. And we're going to experience an example of that now. I believe Rachel Muller is a member here. And tell me a bit about the story and and Rachel. She's getting ready to perform now. Rachel's been here a couple years. She's an amazing storyteller. And she is going to be telling... The Master Thief. The Master Thief. The Master Thief. Take it away, Rachel. The Master Thief was clever. While the Count was busy securing his bedchamber, the thief was making his way in the darkness to the gallows, where he cut down a poor sinner who was hanging there. He carried the body on his back to the castle, then set up a ladder to the Count's bedchamber and climbed the ladder with the corpse balanced on his shoulders. The Count spied the silhouette of the dead man and fired his pistol, and the master thief immediately let the body fall. Then the thief jumped down and hid in a dark corner and watched by moonlight while the Count exited his window, dragged the body into a corner of the garden, and began to dig a hole. My story is called The Hand with the Knife. Once there was a young girl who had three brothers. In the eyes of the mother, the brothers could do no wrong, but the daughter was given a very dull spade and sent out to the heath to cut peat for the stove. Now on her way out, there was an elf that fell in love with her. And as she passed by this boulder, he stuck his hand out with a knife in it that was very sharp. I love leaving people at the very edge of their seats, and you're probably just one line away from the punchline. But no, we're going to stop you there. Thank you so much. What is it about the Grimm's fairy tales that you love telling so much? They're so grim. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you very much for sharing. We'll have more information on how you can come and hear the rest of Noel's story, and he will not be rudely interrupted like I just did. We promise that's every second Friday. We'll have more information later on this edition of The Daily. You are watching The Daily on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen, and today we are spending time with the Around Town Tellers. Now, Marva Blackmore is a founding member of the Around Town Tellers and uh, has a particular knowledge, an in-depth knowledge, on the Brothers Grimm. It's their 200th anniversary. That's correct. Their uh, first uh, household tales and children's tales was published in 1812. And so this is the 200th anniversary. And I've just come back from Ottawa where I participated in a show at the National Arts Centre celebrating that 200th anniversary, a storytelling show. Now, these fairy tales are quite grim and initially were not intended for children at all. No, the first edition were tales that were gathered from adults and published for adults. The adults would sit around and while they were spinning and weaving and sewing, they would share share the stories and those were the stories that they gathered. However, when they published their second edition, they toned it down a bit because they realized that children were in fact reading the stories. But the stories in the first edition were grim. Talk to me a a little bit about the way in which the stories were written and told, separating that from the actual stories themselves. 
is, is the art of the style of writing and telling celebrated as much as how grim the stories were? Because I imagine a lot of them were based, as you s on fact. Um, well, no, they're not based on fact. They're based on fairy tale, fairy tale and myth that they gathered from the, the tales that were told around the storytelling circles. Okay. Now, were they based on fact? All fairy tales, all myth. There's some basis in fact. Yeah. But where it starts and where it ends? What, what is it that you like about how, how it's written, H how they write the, the tales? Oh, I like how they're told. We, as a storyteller, we, I always take the written tale and then I rework it to fit my mouth. And <laughs> so <laughs> it's never quite the same as it was on the written page. Okay, uh, running, I know we're running a little bit long. Quick example, how, how would you tweak, change, alter something for telling rather than reading? Well, for instance, I'll be doing Faithful Johannes, which it comes as Faithful John in, in the current uh, English editions. And how I tweaked that was I, I altered a description of Faithful Johannes so that the description that you get that I give is quite different than what the Grimm's give. But I think you have a better picture of this faithful servant that served the king and his father and his father's father and his father's father's father. So he's a wee bit old. <laughs> Marva, thank you. Well, I can't wait to come every second, uh, on the second Friday of every month, there's an event here at the Unitarian Church on Townsite Road. We'll give you more information on that before we close this edition of The Daily. Still to come, though, two men and their fishing rods. But before we get to any of that, the celebrations in Port Alberni for the centennial continue. They just can't come up with enough ways to celebrate. This time, it's all about dogwood trees. a couple of brothers grim if I ever saw them I bet they have some pretty good stories to tell from their experiences out fishing on the lakes in and around Nanaimo we are coming to the end of this edition of the daily if you've noticed a theme it's because there is one the brothers grim fairy tales is celebrating 200 years and the around town tellers is hosting a special event on Friday May the 11th from 730 until about 930 right here at 595 Townsite Avenue in Nanaimo it's a five dollar admission there's a concession stand by donation and they put a whole lot of heart soul and passion a fabulous evening celebrating the brothers Grimm on uh, Friday May the 11th that is it for this edition of the daily I'm Kate Bergen thank you very much for watching and before we go though one more little excerpt here is Marva Johannes had been faithful to the king and to his father and his father's father and his father's father before him and that is why he was known as faithful Johannes. And when he appeared at the door, his legs bowed, his spine so curved that it heaved forward with each step and he peered at the king through his one good eye, his mouth puckered around two rotten teeth. But the king smiled and he waved for Johannes to come forward to his bed.